Dr. Bijay told me uh, to give the lecture on uh, types of data, but before that, I thought that, uh, you know, many of us have learned so many lectures, classes on types of data, but what, uh, before going into the types of data last minute, I thought it would be nice if you can proceed some um, uh, data entry kind of work. So that would be much more meaningful uh, to start with because uh, it's true that type of data is uh, useful um, while you are uh, analyzing the data and uh, trying to make the interpretation of the data. So theoretically, it sounds quite good relevance to, to start with the types of data. But every time um, we face the challenge while we are doing the data analysis and getting uh, information because for you to build the direct interest would be to uh, uh, getting data, analyzing data, making reports or publications. So, so that's that's a meaningful way to proceed. So ba based on that, I slightly I will change the topic here, but next one, next class, we will start, uh, we'll touch the type of data rather than uh, today I'm going for this, how to enter the data. So we are having a basic uh, SOP. Now we created a basic SOP. So I will touch the basic SOP um what should be done and what should be not done uh before that so but preliminary things very very important a few few points i would say and based on my experience here in working in tmh uh what i realized that that should be and based on that i am going to say that you people please maintain that stuff then it could be very nice and help you during your once you are going to submit your thesis or working on your thesis in final year so day one onwards, if you can maintain these few steps, that would be very nice. So first of all, I have seen that uh, many of you started to collecting um, uh, data uh, and uh, just the way you collect that, uh, you just go to the case files, started to getting the data, whatever the informations you, you get and you started to entering the data. And you are having back in the back of the mind, there is a myth that, okay, yeah, you are getting these things or let's put it. Maybe we will record later uh, during the analysis. So these kind of things are there. But believe me, uh, that makes lots of lots of uh, effort and takes lots and lots of time to enter the data. And unnecessary, those stuffs never been used for the analysis part. And uh, so these stuffs gets gets over and over. So my first point is that please try to avoid those unnecessary stuff that you are going to enter in your Excel file or a spaces file. First of all, make very clear about what is the primary objective of your study. And based on that, what about the parameters are really linked with you to serve your primary objective? No, I'm not showing anything. I'm not showing okay, anything. Okay, okay. Okay. I'm putting comments on that. So, uh, so first of all, that you you very very uh, clear on that the primary objective of the study. So most of all, you are doing the primary objective would be the uh, disease free survival, local regional control, or let's say that um, uh, um, uh, overall survival. So these are the mostly considered in 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 clinical research or oncological research domain. So if these are your primary objective, so obviously you have to be very clear about which part, which, which type of data you are going to enter in your Excel file. So obviously, if you talk about that um, uh, primary objective, let's say primary objective is the overall survival. So you have to have the date of registrations of the patients and date of last follow-up of the patient. These are the very important parameters to be given. And you can't do any, any mistakes over there. And because everything, every step, every outcome of the research is based upon these parameters that you are going to enter. What I feel that if many times we, 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 we enter the data, uh, that information, the durations of survival or, or, or this uh, date of registration or date of last of follow up, these puts, these steps we put very, very later state in the Excel file. And by that time, Many of us got, get uh, very reluctant about to entering the data. So be, be, be very cautiously, we put that third stuff very importantly. And apart from that primary objective, there are other stuff like secondary objectives and on that, whatever the relevant parameters are to be there or variables are to be there, please figure it out. So first point is that just 
go through your primary objective very repeatedly and asked what is the direct linked parameters or variables i am saying the term called parameters or variable what are the terms and uh, whatever the variables and parameters to be considered to serve your primary objective of your study once that is fixed give emphasis how to enter the data simultaneously others relevant parameters don't go for so many 1500 or 200 parameters and keep on trying to enter the data it's never going to work try to make as less as possible to enter your data i'm talking about in terms of the thesis part as less as possible maybe 10 20 parameters if you could put and if these parameters are done very nicely that is a wonderful job i would say rather than putting 200 parameters variables and partially entered the data so that is not going to help you at any way so first put the point very clearly parameters what is the primary objective according the parameters to be defined and enter the data now i'm saying that what's the basic stuff should be there while you are entering the data so let's say the first and very important part of your data set is the id parameters that is stand for the identifications of the para of the of an individuals and that could be two way enter one one way is that the id along according to your study uh, according to your study or the work you are performing and simultaneously another id could be prepared just to link your data set with these uh, electronic records and other stuff and that could be as id of tmh so if we say that id tmh that is fine good enough so that will help you to to put the data patient cc number um, uh, over there and that would be very useful to link different time points to the patient's data how these are entered so let's say cc and um, uh, let's say 2 1 1 3 4 these are the stuff we, we, we commonly put but simultaneously as far as your study concerns so it is good practice for the first individual if he's the first individuals you should put the number 1 and second individual like 2 and sequentially you can put the number so this is the very preliminary step and one thing is that we are having a we are having a cross check procedure we always try to find out the patient's mm, uh, data entered repeatedly or not. So sometimes what happened that uh, by mistake, uh, we put, I think you can see my uh, Excel file, right? Any of you could um, uh, say? No. 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 no, you can't even see my Excel file. I still for started screen sharing to stop and fill second screen share. Okay. Now you could see it is still started. It has not ended. Still you can see? No, no. Okay. Yes. Now fine. Could no, you see it? No. Same kala hi dikh raha hai bas. Oh yeah. Yeah, all right. यहां से शेयरिंग तो दिखा रहा है मुझे अच्छा मैं एक पीडीएफ भेज रहा हूं इसको एक बार कर देते हैं फिर मुझे मेल कर मैं शेयर कर देता हूं भेज दे चलेगा ठीक है but I'll chat with all the PDF. I'll share it with the PDF. Okay. Okay. Okay.
to send you the SOPs. So I'll speak on that only. Huh? Give me a minute, I'll share from my. I'm trying to make another sharing. Can you see Ratanu? Yes, we can see. Thanks. Ah, see, 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 this is this uh, data entry SOPs we prepared. So uh, with uh, TMC Banaras, we, we cre uh, created this. Now this is all approved. So I'll show one by one. You, you go, just go to next uh, slide. Yes. So these are the two important aspects of the study. So it's determined the amount of the quality of data center during the research interview and adequate care should be taken uh, along with the study design you are considering and as well as the uh, data entry that has the potential to do in the as conduct the study. So this study is basically says about that's why saying that if you open that um, uh, the describe the process of stand, standardizing and cleaning data. So we are trying to make the data data to a particular format. The data should be entered in a uh, correct format, and um, in all 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 centers. Obviously, the objective is to provide some basic guidelines for data entry. The steps is to to make the data entry based on the entering the data in Excel or CSV file, and it is appreciated that data entry is performed in Excel and so and 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 thoroughly checked by by the statisticians. So the uh, scope of the SOP is to provide the detailed instruction of how, carry, how to carry out the data entry and uh, definitely a well-written SOP will facilitate the training and that's why we prepare this these SOP along with that. So now I, what I was saying that uh, I will go into next page, but before that, what, what I was trying to say that you should have the ID uh, parameters, uh, the first column of an Excel sheet. Unfortunately, I can show the sharing the screen, but I was, I was thinking to show that how to enter the uh, ID, ID part. So if you're having the ID Excel file, column file, the first column should be along with the ID followed by the um, uh, ID should be your consecutive number of the patients like one, two, three, four, like that, followed by ID of the TMH, uh, that uh, case number should be there, followed by that important parameters of the demographic parameters, I would say, as far as uh, things are primary objective, as well as the important parameters. So one important parameters could be, could be that uh, demographic parameters like gender, like age, like um, uh, BMI, all the vitals kind of things could be useful. These, these useful parameters are commonly used while you are making the demographic table and making the comparison of the patients with respect to different treatment regime. So these are the demographic profile need to be there. And you can't make any, any negligence while we are entering the data because your EMR uh, gives us the opportunity to enter the properly the data. Now I'm talking about while we are, we are putting, while we are making the cross check on the data, how we are going to make the uh, data checking part. So variable, the variables name should be without space. So sometimes what, what we do that, Commonly, I've seen that let's say treatment, one column, treatment given, that's fine. But you sometimes put the Excel file column name, variable name given, treatment given space. And then um, uh, on that day, let's say on 30th or first day, treatment given space, first day. 
So that's not the way to enter the data. So that should be should be no space while you are talking the uh, putting the variable name. That's very important. If we put these variable names with space, then it's very very difficult to identify different software. What is the real name of the variable, and as well as the analysis also becomes quite difficult. Not only that, this as far as the FDA guidelines are there, that is very stringent guidelines are there by FDA. I'm not going into details of the FDA guideline, but they say there is a very standard procedure to put the name of the variable. So again, we are not saying that you have to maintain every single name or dictionary of the FDA stringent criteria guideline. That may not be possible where you are talking about in the academic institute. But at least minimal criteria is that we should not have any space name in the variables. So that should be avoided. Secondly, the variables name don't have have the special characters like like any special character. So that should be also be avoided. One thing is exceptional that that the underscore value can be given, and that's also also uh, expected that. Once we are giving the repeated variable name, like like if you want to put that BMI at first visit, BMI at second visit, BMI at third visit, in that sense you can put BMI underscore one, BMI variable name BMI underscore two, BMI underscore three like that. Otherwise, if the variables names are not going to be repeated in nature, so like you are not going to change the sex variable variable name sex. And under that variable name gender or sex, its male and female are going to come. It's not that we are going to pay like say gender underscore one, gender underscore two. These are not relevant. But in case of BMI, or if you want to have that uh, BP or or other other stuff, those are every times going to change dynamic in nature variable. For them, we can put the underscore, and after that we can put the number. the patient number the csv or excel files does not have the column for the patient name so another thing is very important we don't main, uh, maintain that the patient's identification should be should be uh, means uh, giving the patient identification should be avoided and it should be anonymized data and several times we keep on changing from one one email to another email with the patient's name patient names one thing is that you, you people must be try to put and because i know that that culture is still there we enter while you are entering the data we try to put the uh, patient name while you are putting the patient name patient son name it's it's for if you if you think if you put the 300 patients num, uh, name every time how much time it's required and these are not really required because as far as the analysis is concerned this is not required as far as this uh, pa patient's identification is concerned that should be protected those are also not required so please avoid to entering the patient name while you are entering in the excel file or csv file or or spss file wherever you are trying to enter the data mostly we encourage to enter the data in the excel or csv file excel and csv both are same rather than putting the spss but but still okay but if you if you be comfortable we can convert the spss file to excel file but still mm, don't try don't put the patient name very very difficult because you are putting the identifications of the tmh uh, uh, case number that is more than enough to link later on now patient id number should be given as the patient id or patient or the column name should be given as a capital i capital d very specific date format then another challenge every time because i start trying to say that overall survival because commonly if you people work on the primary endpoint would be disease free survival loco original control or overall survival to calculate these values overall survival relapse free survival or disease free survival very important parameters be considered is that date and date is very much useful and sometimes i have seen because we are having in entire world we are having so many way to entering the entering the date format somewhere it puts month first somewhere puts day first somewhere puts year first followed by months so many complex procedure are there so for standardization purpose we put that order like dd dot mm dot y y y y to dot dot we very specific it should not be dash it should not be slash it should be dot reason for that is basically it's very easy 
to convert that dot format to numerical format and very easily you can calculate from dates to day because while we are talking about the overall survival we don't say about once we have touched the survival analysis and the other part we will clear about it how to make the overall survival and other stuff but let's say overall survival calculations disease -free survival calculations these are the durations calculations and these steps are dependent on the how we are going to put the dates over there so be specific date should be given as dd dot mm dot y y y y that's the way the date should be given now age of the patient should be given sometimes we put by by by, by mixture of everything I means sometimes some patients we, we we get very very you know um uh, uh, we're not clear about that for for patient for child uh, what should we put in the months or we should put uh, age in the years or for for the common people so adult what what should we put so so be specific age should be given in means a number and years so that's the thing and the column name should be given as age a g e not age of the patient no space no special character nothing only simple age parameters so just these are the example given these are applicable for other stuff as well, other parameters as well. Secondly, the gender parameters. So gender parameters also given as a gender name. And the common phenomena is that we, we, we because we are having some standard practice to analyzing the data. So based on the analyzing and interpretations way, commonly we provide the males. If gender is male, then provide as a one. If females then provides as a two, that is a common way to enter the data. Sometimes we put capital A, small a, capital A, small a, and the Excel file, we see that it's a mixture of everything. Somewhere it is put an M dash, sometimes it's put in small a, one, so many combinations comes while you are entering the data. So because, because it's not been taught where Anywhere, so we, we 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 don't care that you think okay it will be managed, but no, it's not being manageable. So better put the data, make the stratifications. Like if it is a male, then put at one, otherwise two, and if if it is a third gender, then you can put three. But it is very very rare event. So date status again another very important parameter. So we always consider. So sometimes we put. I have seen you people maybe might be seeing some old Excel file. Or, or some spaces files over there, but the standard practice, if the patient is alive, when you have seen the patients that last time visits, if the patient is alive, then it should be zero. By telephonically, by from the relatives, you could confirm the patient is died in particular date, then you could put the death status of the patient as one. So column name should be death, column name should be death, and under the death status, if the patient is alive, it should be zero. If the patient is died, then it should be one. If the patient is, is died due to other causes, if you think the patient died due to other causes, that is very, very tricky job. I would say don't, don't jump on that to put that too. But there is a very tricky job, but there is a way to handle it. Uh, but if you, if you know the patients died due to other causes, then better put it as a two. Okay, so not patient died due to not due, due to the cancer patients because they are you are you are talking about treating the patients and comparing the treatment and making the stuff that which arm or which treatment therapy is better than other. In that sense, if we put that death is as equal to um, one, then what? And obviously those patients died due to the other causes. In that sense, it makes no no sense on that. So it is better to avoid that stuff and put it as a two. Now cell values. No special characteristic should be given in the in the in the cell values. Uh, sometimes we, we always get reacted while we are entering the data. No use of highlighting or filtrations possible. So don't put any filtration step over there because we know that it makes life very easy. Uh, entering procedure back easy. But try to avoid it. It's 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 ultimately it's confused the systems and it, we 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 don't get the correct results. 
and sometimes like we put the highlighter use the highlighters like red color blue color green color we keep on putting the highlighting on the excel file similarly this self cell values are also been highlighted try to avoid that that's not a standard practice to enter the data now comes to the missing value so so many times we observe that that while we are open the uh, 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 patient file or emr you will say that many places the missing values are there you are not in a positions to enter those data what should we do so there is a two step it should not be blank you can't put that cell value for particular patients for particular because for example you have seen that the you open the case file i have seen the patient age is not mentioned over there what to do so try to figure it out the possible way while you are the patients coming second visit or somehow try to make it's very uncommon to if the age is not given but still the for example if the age is not given try to put it there try to fill it up after so many attempts if you still fail to uh, fail to enter those those stuff over there so good practice is to put if the variable is supposed to taken as a continuous variable or numerical variable the types of data i am supposed to tell it today if the variable is very 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 uh, uh, numeric format then put it as a dot and if that variable is character format like gender uh, for kind of things and it still you means then put it as a capital a in capital a okay capital a in capital a not small a small n uh, small n small a or something different only capital n capital a now recording recording of the variable the recording of the variable are mentioned in a separate sheet of the same excel file of the, uh, with the po possible entry point of the cell value now you can see that you are let's say i am having so many variable let's say 20 variable like uh, like uh, therapy given therapy given i am i am putting as a 1 and 2 and i i forget the what is the 1 and what is the 2 it, it may happen that you may miss to 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 put that what should be the variable name in that case it is better and the obviously it should be there in the next excel file the sheet next sheet on the excel file it should maintain the dictionary and the recording of the variable like if it is a male then like gender it will make a excel file, a cell value it should be mentioned as a gender under that male is equal to 1 female is equal to 2 and dot numeric value is missing and any character values are missing so now the next slide um, yes now these steps we we put it for a for a for a outlier detections or while we entering uh, while you are going to take your data how you are how you are clear enough how your data is done properly or is there any mistakes are there or not to check it that these are some r steps we put it there but mostly what i try to find out what we are trying to say that once you are, once you give the requisitions uh, for analyzing the data or at least you can also check your data is correct enough or not so one terminology called is outlier uh, outliers can detected with the help of a box plot any data points outside the blocks will be will be detected as an outlier the reason for outlier sometimes while you are entering the data so many times it's happen like if you check the outliers and say the age is age is given some person's age is given is 110 years so it is obviously not going to happen so that kind of check procedures help us to overcome the scenario so it is actually it is a 111 not 110 but that mistakenly we put it as a 110 so detections of the outlier and obviously it could be genuine also it could be 110 years could be genuine also so it's that it's not that whenever it's now 110 we just straight forward away you are going to delete it as and put it as a 11 so that's not the job job is to go into details check the case record files and check that is it a 11 or 110 or what is the reality so detection of the outlier help us to identify the what is the logic or what is the reason of the, of the some abstract value over there and overcome it uh with this uh with this uh, cross checking over there so that is the outlier detection so simultaneously the with the outlier detection we can go with the minimum and maximum value detection so minimum value will indicate the lowest possible value that is expected from a variable and can be checked whether it is expected or not minimum value like you know uh, 
if you enter the data you are entering and you mentioned that in your study the age group minimum inclusion criteria minimum age group should be 18 years and above and we have seen that somehow some patients uh, age is below 18 years so obviously you have to delete those patients value from your excel file uh, while you are entering the data maximum value obviously sim simply that if you say that my my age should be in, as far as the inclusion criteria or exclusion criteria is concerned you say that it is it can't be more than that years and still you are getting i'm not talking about just the age is i'm giving the example but it could be other part also you can take this different parameters level cbc counts and based on that you decided that okay they are they are they are, they are wbc should not be below that value or upper that value that should be considered the patient should be considered for the treatment if that this is the scenario then then you, by checking the minimum and maximum value of the patient's wbc count you can you can see that okay we should not consider this value or at least for the retrospective or the prospective trial we should avoid entering that patient for our purpose mean and median obviously gives us the good understanding about the data while we are standing on the central positions but that should be done and follow up the points are there that is basically prepared to understand that how we should we should uh, check the data by summary data minimum maximum mean and medium value if easily comes and sd if we put the variable name the sd gives us the standard deviations it is always expected standard deviation should be lesser than mean but always expected but it's sometimes may not happen it's have may not happen there may be some other reasons i'm not going into details but the one of the check we, we always try to find out to understand the data is consistent enough or not by looking that standard deviation is uh, lesser than mean or median or not so that's the thing now in the next point next slide <clears throat> what step uh, step should be done by by study uh, by by statistician as well as clinical collaborators uh, so verified the uh, verified with the clinical collaborator no outlier are present and verified with the clinical collaborator the minimum values what is given is as expected maximum value mm, uh, verified mm, that again that is as far as expected by by uh, checking the mean value median value and standard deviations all are being well we can proceed further then we can further go for the analysis or or make this um, statistical inference followed up that so these are the very preliminary stuff to be considered as a cross check of the data you are you are, you are using so if you give out the 10 20 30 or 200 variables also that is a now we are having a set that we can easily check this inter data sets is correct enough or not if some 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 mistakes are there or not and we try to give it those comments file and thereafter you can check it and uh, make modifications on the data sets mostly happen that we look on the emr and from the emr we try to enter the data manually so these are that's why these these steps make sense over there so it's quite logical but we try to avoid those stuff over there by by uh, putting proper follow of uh, data format um, over there so this is the thing but i was thinking to put the excel file i'm i'm trying to put again another attempt that i can show you that excel file or not mm. uh, i'll stop the screening uh, uh, let let me try from let me try another and make another attempt so if i can if i can show the excel file again Could you see now? So, no, yet no. Oh, oh. Uh, what I'm doing? I'm trying to make it from uh, from my another computer. I hope that will allow me, and then I will speak on the phone. Then will it be okay? Yeah, that is okay. Huh? I'm trying to put it from my another computer. Then just trying to how to basically that. Give me a moment. moment.
so yes what i am saying now i hope i can now open an excel file and show it Could you see now Excel file? Yes, yes. Ah, good. So by combining, combining two computer, I'm trying. To say. <laughs> so what I say? So let's say this is the ID variables that should be there, and as it should be the consecutive number should be given over there, and this number should be given with with your, uh, you know, um, uh. uh with uh, along with your study number that you can put but this this will not help you always to link with the patient's uh, valuable over there so you can put this id tmh over there and that should be the real cc number of the patients so that's the way now one thing that we we can always link with that we can always see that patient's uh, serial number been repeated over there or not and uh, that is the way so try to avoid that repeatedly enter the data the same id should not be given repeatedly and uh, like that so this is the first step now what i was saying that the most important parameters of the survival because while you are working on the cancer domain we always try to the common phenomena is always try to reduce the or prolong the duration of the survival or get the better survival in that sense survivals analysis is an important parameters and for that duration of the survival is very important now first parameters is there that is the date of registrations if you say that you don't want to put uh, the enter long term then you can put date of underscore registration so this this date is basically from from the day you are going to start the therapy for your trial if you're talking about the trial if you're talking about retrospective study also from where what date it has been done so sometimes what happened in terms of the radiations when the date of date of registrations of the patient or the radiations given there is a big gap so to avoid that the common way to to consider the while the patient date of registrations if 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 it is a not far from that uh date of treatment given then uh put the date of registrations as date of start of the treatment and if you think you are talking about the radiation or surgery domain then is a there is a big gap between date of re real registration for the clinic to the date of treatment started so then you put the another another term called date of date of uh treatment started so these this one is very much important because these two dates help us to understand that from where we started to observing the patients and and after that what happened to the patient in terms of the clinical outcomes or the therapeutic betterment of the patients so that is very relevant so and you can't ignore that and it should be very cautiously put the date data date over there and as i mentioned the date should be given as dd mmyyy so that's let's say 12 12 0 5 and 12 1 9 so it's a 12th may 2019 that's the way it should be so sometimes what happened by commonly we, we could put it as a these things and they are after sometimes we put and then what happened you know we get confused so this is the second one is very easy to enter because you don't need to put just you put 12 5 20 19 and easily it will it will give us but the correct one we we always prefer or will is try because there is a meaning on that to put the data like 12.05.019 so that's the easiest way you can make it so try to avoid these stuff so another way what happened that we get we get confused so because it's sometimes be cautious that it is a is it a 12th may or fifth december okay so fifth december 2019 or 12th may um, um, uh, 12th may so that is another confusing term 
So try to avoid that one. That's why we are putting it as a DD and MM and, and we move, uh, put it as a standardized practice over here. So try to now again, this date should be given as a again, uh, let's say 14 and date of registrations. And after that, two days, patients were started off for treatment. So if, as I mentioned that it is a not, if not very far, so try to put it a similar date or it is a, as very, very, um, very sophisticated way if you want to put then very, very easily we can put as a 14th uh, May 2019. And thereafter that last date of very, very important parameter, last date of observation, last date of observation. So this date gives us basically the which dates last patients has visited your clinic or hospital or at least now days due to corona or other stuff we are doing this teleconsult uh, tele so in that sense if it is a possible if you can check it that patients are was alive and, and status so we can put also the date of the last date of the evaluation through telephonically also so that date should also be done let's say as a now this 12th is basically 12th is basically the december month and let's say this thing. So now this is the last date of follow-up observations followed by another parameter that is another very important parameter that I mentioned that a death parameter. The death parameters could be obviously you, you check that last date of follow-up observation was, was that patient was alive. So you, you should put it as a zero. And if the patients are that day was not alive and you check that once you call that patient on that day, let's say another patient's observations are quite similar on that patient, these patients, like let's say I just make some modification on this data. Otherwise, let's say the similar time point, this patient also been observed. And you also call that patient like rather than 20th December, we call that patient. And you found that that the patients died on September some date. Let's say 20th, 20th September, the patients died. So in that sense, you have to put that date status as one. But once you call the patient's party, patients into uh, relatives and found that patients died on 20th September, then you have to modify that date like that, 20th September. Okay, so that's the way it should be. It should not be that last date of follow-up observation. We call them on 20th, uh, 24th December 2019 and you are going to put it as a death date as a one. No. For that patient, if you inquire that patient on 20th, 24th December 2019, but you, actually the patient was alive until 20th September 2019. So in that sense, it should be given as a 20th September 2019 and follow, followed by death status should be given as when, one. So that's the durations. So then we can easily find out the overall durations, overall survival of the patients by making that E2 minus D, C, D2 if we talk about the treatment durations. Here you will not get value. There is another way to get the value. I'm not going into details, but and the software way we make it, but because the overall we calculate by E2, E2 by E2 by minus D2. And if we think that date of registration is very near to the date of treatment, then we can uh, change the D2 by C2, but it's hardly happened. Very rarely we do consider, but commonly we can consider that D2 as over there. The reason for that, we don't put the value. We are not going to get any value over there. We don't want to, we want to make it very blind over that the calculations of overall survival. We try to make as much more blind over there. So to, to overcome that, we put it as a numeric format. There is a way to calculate that this, very easily. You can make this numeric value and then we can easily calculate the overall survival, but leave that stuff to us leave that stuff to for calculating the statisticians to do the overall survival calculations for the, as far as the data entry concerns. So try to put the data in that manner. As I mentioned that, that if the date status and OS has been given, then then job is over. The, and as far as your primary objective of your study is to, to make the overall survival comparison, that part is over. Now simultaneously, you can put that progression of the disease and disease-free survival. That is another stuff that is always required. 
similarly if we if we how to put that one that if you say that pfs progression free survival so in that sense like death status we put thereafter also we will put the progression status also and in progression status that again the last date of follow up will be also be given last date of follow up or date of progressions so date of progressions date of progression should be given and date of progressions could be last date of follow up with the patient you have seen and that day you understood that patient is progress disease is progress then you can put that day like the first persons you you have you call them telephonically you found that the patient was alive but the disease was progressed uh, like that day because you notice that the disease was progressed you don't know last two to three months the patients you have never seen the patient so you don't know when the disease progressed but while you observe the patients and by telephonically by tele medicine or by when the patient visit to your place that you have seen the patient is 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 having progressions so you can put that data that demand that data actual data you have observed as a 20, 24 december 19 and once you are putting that data this is progressions along with that you can put the progression is equal to 1 similar strategy like death variable we put 0 and 1 similarly here we will put progression as 0 and 1 for in this case the patient is progress so that's why you are put the progression date as 1 uh, and similarly the same, same same patient second patients let's say while we know the patient died by telephonically calling them we understood that the patient is is died but you don't have an until now the patients were observed to your clinic before 20th september you know the patients were not progressed okay uh, so in that sense we don't have anything to do for that person so in that sense we have to put that date of progression also as the similar date because you don't have any evidence for that patient that patients were was progressed or not before is our hard uh, date so in that sense you don't have any options so in that sense you have to put that date of progression for the second patients again as a second uh, 20th september 2019 and corresponding to that date of progression should be given as zero because you don't have any certification or confirmations for that and similarly like ways we calculating the pfs duration we can also calculate and the pfs duration will be calculated by f2 minus d2 similar way again just i am putting the formula here i am not showing the value here because because there is a we try to avoid that kind of calculation saver so that can be done very easily if you, if you, if you enter the data in that manner so that's a Uh, i'm not showing you the software calculations over there but you can you can do it very easily so pfs can be calculated now another third scenario may occur like progress uh, uh, that last date of follow up you you called it uh, called the persons and you found that the similar way let's say another 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 uh, date we try to put it let's say this patient was date of registers and 25th april 2018 the patient was uh, registered and immediately let's say we started his uh, treatment on the same day and we found that um, somehow the patient uh, was not available or missed the missed the missed the study last visit was there uh, let's say up to 7th uh, or let's say 5th 5th july the patient's uh, last visit was available but uh, until that patient was alive we we lost the trace of the patients we don't know what is the scenario of the patient until now so then what we can do and that that, that up to that day the patient's progression was the disease was well controlled so we can say also the patient's disease progressed or not so in that sense we can do one thing that last date of progression also as a similar way 5th july 2018 and until that day you know that you are you are in a sitting now 2022 you know the patients can't be alive more than 5 months patient could not could not be go up to that level but you can't do anything because you don't have any confirmation the patient is died in that sense you have to put zero over there but the date of the last date of observation should be 5th july 2018 not more than that you can't put today days over there 
you can say okay i don't know the patient is alive or not or died or not i am putting it as a zero but since i am putting the last days of follow up observation because you call the patients now and you have seen that okay um uh, no trace is there or some information is not available so we are going to put the last date of observation as a um, um, today's dates like 15 january 2022 that's not the case the last date of follow up observations when the patient's record is there in the case file that should be given here and the 5th july 2018 and follow up that date should be zero sometimes it, it's quite commonly happened that okay sir i called the patient i found that the um, we could not find anything about the progression or any any status of the patients or we found that patient is died only um, uh, five months back should we put today's date as a last date of follow up no that should not be it should be that that at least the date of death otherwise the date of clinic the patients visited over there the documentation heavy simultaneously the ways and progression should be calculated until now for this third patient since we don't have any any evidence that patient is uh, progressed so we have to put it as a zero over there and that's the part so forget about the calculating the pf ways and ps part we can put it over there um, we can calculate and give it to you leave it to us now another part that i was mentioned that age and if you want to put the age like and bmi and you can put in years not with months or not with the uh, mixture of months and years the put it as exactly years or whatever actual value now bmi again if you think that bmi you are going to calculate every time so then you have to make a rule like bmi underscore one bmi underscore two or if you want to put only the bmi at the time of the first visit then you can put as a bmi only bmi that's all and and you can put that whatever that respective value over there so that's the thing that's the job so another thing except id and id tmh every parameters try to put as a uh, small character no with the mixture of the uh, capital character and the um, um, a small character is a case sensitive try to put all small characters if it is really required to put the special characters put at the underscore obviously for the for the parameters if it is really required to parameter is a very parameters name is very long otherwise if it is a repeatedly in nature and try to ever don't put any patient's num- name over there uh, 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 while you are entering the data with that stuff i will try to uh, i'll uh, end up here and uh, these are the basic preliminary steps uh, and and another thing is that like every parameters coding and coding i means means to mention here like here if you are putting the gender here let's like, say gender gender as i mentioned the gender should be either one and two if you are putting it here then that should be another excel file here we will enter and we will put the gender here and under the gender column we will put male is equal to one and female is equal to two that is the ideal way to enter the data now we are put let's say gender and another let's say another uh, uh, comorbidity like dm is there diabetes mellitus is there or not so if you want to put so other parameters like along with the gender if you are putting other parameter like the yes or no kind of things uh, comorbidity copd is there or not if other things are there so see, it is a present then it should be given as one if it is absent then it should be given as zero that's all and similarly if we put the dm here similarly you will put here dm as dm dm present is equal to 1 absent is equal to 0 that's all that that the data sheet dictionary should be maintained in the excel file too okay uh copd and other things can be done in a similar manner 1 and 0 or 0 and 1 and sometimes we are having a uh, having a tendency to put a single column like comorbidity and comorbidity i just i, I because if you see the some old file old excel file uh, you will see the old, uh, comorbidity and here it is given as sometimes da sometimes give as copd sometimes given as a small d small m capital m so these steps you will see that's not the acceptable format to do the analysis if the particular if you talk about a particular comorbidity put it there then write it as a yes or no otherwise don't make a single column and put everything over there because every if I, if i talk about the first patients first patients if you put as a comorbidity as a dm but i don't have the documentation the per patient was having other stuffs over the csd or copd or other stuffs are over there or not that 
information i am going to miss over there so ideal scenario is there put every possible comorbidities parameters over there if it is a really important parameter to be considered for your analysis put it over there and after that make the uh, enter the data as a 1 and 0 or by as yes or no otherwise don't 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 put that uh, the parameters over there at all okay so these are the steps mostly uh so in that sense i'll uh, end it here um i i'm my apology because uh, means we, we i messed uh, with this uh, the presentations with this uh, zoom and other thing but i don't know why it happened uh, i'm really sorry on that so if you are having any question and comment please please uh, raise your uh, co comments and query does anyone have any questions for dr tanu i can't see any questions in the chat atanu it was a nice okay. lecture okay yeah uh, thank you uh, with that uh, we can wind up the, the class so that people can go for their clinical duties